Rebecca, we're going to be talking about the Jameson cell. So I had to do a crash course on it. Um, a lot of people in the industry will know about it, of course, but I was going through the website. There's a really good video just sort of showcasing it. Um, can you just introduce it to the audience for anybody who doesn't know what it actually is and how the technology works? And then we're gonna, we got plenty of stuff to cover after that. But I just wanted that sort of brief overview first. Absolutely. So we'll sort of talk through this video, but obviously you can see it on our landing page. Um, we start by comparing a conventional tank cell circuit to the uh, sort of equivalent in Jamison cells. Um, and we'll talk a bit about that shortly. But uh, basically, the video moves you through um, the cells themselves, as well as the equipment, the ancillary equipment that's required. So starting off with the pumps that actually feed the Jamison cell and sort of doing a walkthrough um, of each of the, the levels, moving through some of the discharge tanks and then up to the cells themselves, mainly to show sort of the points that the two different cells in this uh, rougher scavenger set up the actual um, feed line leading up to the slurry distributor and then the way in which the slurry will be distributed into the cell um, and pointing out some of the key characteristics. So the wash water available in the Jamison cell, which helps us to achieve premium grade. Um, obviously, the actual design of the slurry injection circuit, if you will, the downcomers, which is um, how we create very fine bubbles and um, and push or force a, um, a bubble particle interaction to essentially remove the consideration for residence time when designing these circuits. And we'll talk about that um, a bit mm -hmm. more shortly, but you'll see the, um, the very tumultuous mixing zone that's formed in the Jamison cell, which is really sort of the underpinning of its whole design and why it's so successful um, and its ability to recover across a very broad size range. And then moving through, as we slowly get to the next part of the video, what you'll see is the uh, recycle mechanism for the Jamison cell. So um, one of the key characteristics to this is keeping the pressure to each of the downcomers or the slurry distributors uh, quite constant. And so the Jamison cell has an inbuilt recycle mechanism. It will recycle part of the tails and that percentage will vary depending on how the feed to the cell varies and allow for that consistent operation and that consistent pressure to, um, to maintain the velocity that we need in the slurry jet. Um, and therefore that, um, that mixing and the fine bubbles that are generated. It's it's a very good, it was a very helpful video for me because I need to like I said I need to do a crash course. We should clarify again. A lot of people are going to be familiar with it, but for anybody who's not, this is not some new technology. This has been around for I, mean, I think forty years or so, right? Yes, you are absolutely right. So nearly 40 years, the Jamison cell has been uh, in existence. So we're sort of at the stage where we have um, more than 500 installations sort of internationally. Um, and as you can imagine, over that time from its origins, we've had a lot of time to um, continue to improve and develop the actual design itself. And so we've sort of seen it move from its origins, which were typically in, uh, in cleaning, through to new applications in roughing it at the front end of circuits as well and, and the design of full concentrators based around Jamison cells. <laughs> 